Hi, everyone. Welcome. If you want to chat with us, make sure you use the Q&A feature if you're watching on Zoom. If you're watching on social media, make sure to leave comments. All right. Welcome, welcome. All right, so I think we can go ahead and get started. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone, tonight. Welcome to Makeup, Beauty, and Art. Uh, today, we're really excited to bring you a 1960s pop art inspired look. My name is Jessica Nunez, I'm the Youth Program Manager. And I'm Sarah Shedig, the Manager of School and Teacher Programs at the Newark Museum of Art. And then and our in the sky. Hi, my name is Megan Douglas and I'm the manager of public programs. And um, I wanna say thank you, Jessica and Sarah for joining us tonight for this um, very exciting makeup look. Um, this is just so everyone knows, this is our first makeup beauty and art. Um, and we're very excited tonight. We're going to take you on a trip back in time to the 1960s. So I hope that a little bit of music um, inspired you and, and helped you feel like you were a part of that era. Um, now, we all know the 1960s was a very tumultuous time. Things happened in the world and history all the way from the Vietnam War to Woodstock. There were racial injustices. There was the sexual revolution. Um, but from all of this birthed an incredible art movement, and that is the art movement called pop art. And that's what we're going to be focusing on tonight. So I'm going to turn it over to you ladies to show us our inspiration for tonight's look. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So I hope everyone uh, knows a little bit about Twiggy. Twiggy becomes this amazing icon in the 1960s. And just to let you know, I mean, this made me feel a tiny bit old, but in 1966, she is just 17 years old at the height of her modern, uh, modeling career. And she really does coin this amazing look with the false lashes, the bottom lines, they're not false lashes, they're drawn on. And we're gonna be seeing these graphic lines and these bold washes of color inspired by pop art throughout this presentation. So the next slide has Twiggy, it's a really fun uh, image, has Twiggy doing her makeup and almost a step-by-step, -step, a pictorial tutorial of how to get this look yourself at home. And everyone, and I just want you to know that most of uh, the advertisement, the campaigns for cosmetics are geared toward teen girls. Like that, that is the main uh, audience. So we have Twiggy doing a little bit of a crease, darkening her crease, adding some mega- like that, that is the main uh, as audience. The, as well as some lines at the bottom of her eye. All right, and here's a close-up look. You too can achieve this look with a lot of mascara. I'm gonna talk about this a little later. We'll be clumping on our mascara later. Yes, so be prepared. Uh, this slide is pretty amazing. We have three beautiful women uh, on that slide. Let me know in the chat if you know who's up on our slide or wait for, for a few of you to send in. Oh yes, and in the chat, in the chat, we've also posted uh, what materials, what materials, what makeup tools you'll be needing. So yes, we have Sophia Loren, Cher, Diana Ross. Yes, absolutely. We had to include everyone. Um, I just wanna let you know that during this time, beauty companies are not really producing colorful shades of foundation. Um, well into the 90s and 2000s, it becomes a real issue with foundations that actually match women of color. Um, women of color during this time are creating their own beauty products and it becomes like a cult uh, personal thing uh, that you do with your friends. The mass production of cosmetics is not geared towards women of color at this time. And it takes us a very long time to get there. Uh, not until the 90s do we see companies really focusing on foundations that cover all the beautiful shades that we have. Uh, right now, what we see with Sophia Loren is she's doing this beautiful cat eye. We're gonna be talking about a cat eye a little later, but the reason we love this look and it's so timeless is it makes our eyes a lot bigger and it el elongates our lash line as well. So I'm going to pass it over to Sarah and she's going to tell you a little bit about what inspired us to do this program today. 
Yes. So this is not the look that we will be doing. Um, but I want to start off with this image. Now, I wore this for Halloween a few years ago um, because I also was inspired. And you probably have seen other people do this too, um, doing a Roy Lichtenstein look. Um, but it's a great introduction to what is pop art. You know, it's probably one of the most popular um, movements that most people know about. Uh, so we have Roy Lichtenstein to the right and also my look where I, even though we talked about graphic lines with Twiggy, you could see the graphic lines on my face as well. And what it's doing is it's sculpting, it's defining, and those same things were being shown in 1950s comics as well as Roy Lichtenstein's work, which was inspired by 1950s romantic comics. Um, we can move on to the next slide and show uh, probably the most famous American pop artist. Um, this is Andy Warhol. Has everyone ever heard of him? I'm pretty sure it's, he is everywhere. And to this day, he is still commercially used. Um, so we specifically chose these works um, of Marilyn Monroe because this is what inspired our look. Uh, as far, aside from um, the 1960s Twiggy look, you will see why. Because on our left side, we have Pink Marilyn. And on the right side, we have Blue Marilyn. Um, this is courtesy of MoMA and Tate. Um, but the really cool thing about Andy Warhol's work is that he did make it very accessible. He made them in multiples. Um, the thing with this Marilyn Monroe series, and there's a lot of them, he used the same image. And the image... Um, was a publicity image from a film she was in called Niagara in 1953. And he used this continuously. So when you ever see a Marilyn, it always looks similar, but what's different is the added colors. Um, and he achieved this by um, screen printing, but he'd use five screens. The uh, fifth screen would be of the image of Marilyn. And then the four other ones would be overlays of different colors. So that's how you see all these different shades and they're very vibrant and bright, right? So this is what we were inspired by as far as this bold color that you didn't really see as much with um, Twiggy did in that specific image, um, the first one we saw. But a lot of times you just see these really bold graphic double lines, right? And pad eyes. So you're gonna see this in our next look. You can go to the next slide. Here's another very iconic image. Now, Andy Warhol, um, he was very humorous and had these very um, under, like sexual innuendo things that he'd share uh, in his work. Um, and this was on an album cover for the Velvet Underground and Nico. And if you see that little thing on the tiny top, so this is a banana, it's an everyday item, very popular um, subject matter in pop art. You know, we see a lot of pinups. We see a lot of superstars. We see everyday items and objects, including food. We have this Campbell soup cans. But in this situation, we have a banana. We can think about, what is a banana, right? For Andy Warhol, it definitely has this underlying sexual innuendo. But what's, what makes it even more funny is that if you did purchase um, this album cover, there's a little arrow on the top that says peel here. You could peel the banana. And it is explained you know, when you read about this that it's a very fleshy uh, banana. So um, super fun, interesting art. I mean, I think it's fun. I think anything that makes you laugh is great. Um, but it's a wonderful transition to our piece that we really wanted to highlight. And this is a piece from the Newark Museum of Art by Marjorie Strider. And this is a later piece. It's 1977, which we will show um, some of her earlier work in the next slide. But when do we ever get to highlight a pop artist that's female? We don't normally hear about them, right? Um, however, they were side by side doing the same things as their male counterparts. In fact, um, her subject matter was just as great, if not better than many, all right? She was next to Tom Wesselman. She was next to uh, Roy Lichtenstein. She was showing next to Andy Warhol, same thing. So I just wanna show her art because it's super fun too. It is a mix between 2D painting and 3D. So you see these strawberries spilling out and then getting bigger and bigger and bigger and building, right? I have no idea the meaning of the work, Again, we can make connections to everyday objects. That's what makes it so accessible, specifically pop art, right? It's, everything is about things that we are living with on a daily basis. So strawberry is something that's just a cool random fact, which who knows, maybe Marjorie Strider also knew this, but Venus, 
Um, the goddess Venus, uh, her symbol was a strawberry because she was the goddess of love and it's the shape of a heart, right? Um, so we can also think about what do strawberries mean to me? When have I gotten strawberries? Maybe it's a romantic thing. Maybe you hate strawberries and you're allergic. I don't know. But <laughs> let's go to the next slide and get an idea um, of what she was doing in the 1960s. And it looks exactly of what we know of pop art. She's creating pinups, but hers are so great to me. Um, they are, again, they're painted, they're 2D and specific areas pop out and protrude like a relief um, and they are sculptural. So she's again, playing with this. And one of her most famous works is Girl with a Radish. This was created in 1963 and it was the um, artwork that was highlighted in one of the first main American pop art art exhibitions at Pace Gallery in 1964 called the um, the first international girly exhibit and her piece this piece was the one that was highlighted and Andy Warhol, Relic Design, Tom Wasselman, all these guys also showcasing with her at this exhibit. Um, she was also known for these triptychs of pinups and we see the best part, take <laughs> owning, being female, um, showing uh, her assets being sculpturally uh, available, I guess. <laughs> and Cheers. the fun thing is that people do want to touch these things because they pop out and that's part of her work. It's meant she's, to be fun. She's so, putting the pop and pop art, right? Exactly, so. exactly. And so definitely look her up, Marjorie Strider, Phenomenal artist, a lot of fun. Um, she played with a lot of different materials throughout her career. Um, so check her out. All right, everyone. So these are the beauty products you're gonna need. If you're watching us on social media, take a screenshot right now. Uh, Sarah and I, we cheated a tiny bit. We already have our foundation on. We have our foundation, your regular skincare routine, whatever you need to put underneath to make your foundation look flawless. In the 60s, we're looking at there again, teens are the main market and they're known for a nice, dewy, fresh foundation, all right? Bright skin, so that's what we tried to emulate today. And what we're gonna be asking everyone to grab are your favorite eyeshadow palettes, some tools, you'll need some makeup brushes, some eye brushes specifically, a lot of liner. We, Sarah and I really love black eyeliner, but you can use any color that is your favorite lashes and lash uh, glue adhesive, uh, as well as a brightening pencil in cream or white for your waterline and lots of mascara. And the setting powder, we're gonna show you a little trick with the setting powder, but grab some setting powder as well. Here's my look. I'll be doing this look. <laughs> Maryland. Now, it is playful and fun. Just remember, you can go out like this if you want. You don't have to go out like this. I probably wouldn't naturally go out like this, but I love makeup and I love playing. And I've been love playing with makeup since I was a little kid. So um, if you notice, I use bright blue shadow um, and I'm actually gonna be doing this exact same look today. So you can see how to follow along. If you, if, if you're having trouble, you do not have to use a bright color. You can use your just regular plain flesh color. You can use a white, you can use, use a nude whatever. It's more about the techniques that we're teaching too, so that you can follow along. And the next slide, if you don't like it, wipe it off. It's okay. Yes. Uh, so do not worry. It, it, it looks intimidating. And I think sometimes we get really overwhelmed with so many beauty products out there. Uh, Queen two different techniques. I'll be doing the pink look. So pink Marilyn, I'm absolutely obsessed with hot pink. And we're, you know what? No more talking, we're gonna get started. We're gonna throw up some polls as well uh, to get you guys to interact. If you have questions for Sarah and I, Megan, our voice in the sky, she's gonna be kind of helping us make sure we keep track of all your questions on social media and on here. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. And I'm gonna get started with an eyeshadow base. My favorite one right now is P. Louise. And I like to use something that is maybe one to two shades lighter than my color, all right? Uh, and I'm also going to be changing over to a camera so you can get a closer look. I'm, um, instead of using a primer, if you don't have that, I'm going to use the opposite. I'm going to use a concealer. And the concealer I use is Born This Way Too Faced. It doesn't matter which one you want to use. I don't know if you can actually see it. It might be hard. 
Um, but you can use a concealer and I'm going to be tapping it on my eyes also just to have that um, first base, the base, and it's going to help that eyeshadow adhere. Uh, while I do this, a quick trick, because I'm going to be creating a dome shape and my camera's over here. I keep forgetting to look on the other side. You're going to open your eyes. Guys, I can't do it with the other camera. <laughs> you know, open your eyes nice and big. Close them, open them. Uh, and it's going to create a limit for where you can go ahead and start drawing your shape. I'm just going to tap it with my finger, make it as easy as possible for you guys. Yeah. So Jess, Jess is kind of doing the lid primer technique. We've got Sarah doing um, just some concealer, which is great. This look can be created with just what you have every day for your, exactly. for your regular face makeup, or if you have, you know, some of your fancy kind of Sephora um, drawer, you can dip in there and get your primer out. And, and, and the reason you two are doing this is because this look is all about the eyes, right? I mean, this, this oh. is all about enhancing your eye, making your eye look big, making your eye pop. Yes, and what the concealer and the, uh, the eyeshadow primer is going to do, it's going to even out if you have um, any veins in your eyes, if you have discoloring on your eyelid, it'll give you a nice even canvas. And it'll also give the eyeshadow something tacky to stick onto so there are no patches in your shadow. Yep. The other thing is, if you have hooded lids, I don't know if you know what that is, it's when... I don't know if you can see it. I, it's harder to see now that I lightened on my eyes, but um, it's when the lid up here kind of folds over your uh, the bottom lid. And it ends up making it a little bit harder when you're doing like a winged eye or adding um, any kind of eyeliner because it starts making your eye look even smaller. Um, so it will help if you even extend over um, your hooded eyelid and then you can help blend your shadow over that too. It really helps. And much like Sarah, I also have <laughs> put it. We're getting old, Jess. <laughs> Don't say that. I'm I'm in denial, guys. Right in the chat. I, I think age is a state of mind. I think, I think everyone has it, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm doing is I'm also going way above my crease. And you know what, uh, Megan, I think it's a good opportunity to drop our very first poll. Yes, yeah. let's do it. If All right, so on Zoom, you'll be able to see it on social media. Feel free to write your answers in the comments. So we want to know um, what your favorite pop art artist is. Is that correct, Je um, Jess? Yes. All right. So we want to know what your favorite pop art art artist is. Try saying that three times fast. So <laughs> right in the chat, um, you know, who do you think of when you think of pop art? Who do you love looking at? You know, we talked a little bit earlier about pop art being really this um, mass produced sort of um, challenge to the traditional fine art. It's got um, tons of advertising comic books. You see it in the everyday. You know, I always think of going to um, a store and you pick up a shirt or a tote bag that has a wonderful Warhol or Keith Haring um, print on it and and it's just easily accessible. So who's your favorite? Maybe it's Andy Warhol. It could be Marjorie Strider. You just found out about her tonight. Maybe you hadn't heard of her before and you loved those strawberries or those popping assets that we looked at. Um, <laughs> it could be Roy Lichtenstein who um, just created her wonderful crying girl face for Halloween. Maybe it's Ro Robert Rauschenberg, maybe it's Jasper Johns, maybe it's Tom Wesselman, maybe you have another you're thinking of and you can put yeah, that. Another type it in the chat. Put okay. it in the comments. I almost forgot, Sarah, I don't know if you forgot. Uh, I forgot the setting powder, guys. So I'm putting on a bunch of setting powder because there will be mine. Uh -huh. falling on my cheek and I don't want it to mess up my foundation. I am not gonna do it. I typically do it, but I actually set my face um, before instead. Um, if you notice, I already started going in with my blue. This is, um, the wired palette. It's really, really bright. I'm going to show you what it looks like. It's a lot of fun. Um, that is very sixties and they're matte colors. Okay. They, and, which is very typical of, Ooh, everyone 41% Andy Warhol. Nice. I love that. We had a lot of Andy Warhols. And then yeah. up, after that was Jasper Johns and then Marjorie, um, 
Strider was kind of, you know, got to have that, that female power, that female empowerment there. I love that. Anymore. If people really should start researching them too and learning about yes. them. Yes. Um, okay, guys, I look a little crazy, but <laughs> I, I did say that the 60s had nice uh, matte dewy, and, you know, the dewiness we're going to add at the end, but nice foundation and nice base. And since I'm not really going to do heavy contour because contouring is more of a, I love all too. of a 2000s thing. See, I, I look wild, guys. Uh, it's more of a nine, late 90s, 2000s, even more now. I'm going to brush this away. So then you'll, you'll notice that it'll leave some areas of my face a tiny bit lighter so we can pretend I contoured. So, so what you have just essentially with this powder under your eyes is kind of like um, I'm going to use an art metaphor here. This is like putting down your tarp before you start your painting so that you, if you drip some paint, if you're in, in the living room or in your studio and you're making something, yeah, yeah you can, you can brush all that away. We have a couple questions in the chat about, um, so the, sh the shadows you're using, are they uh, matte or sparkly? Mine are matte and Jess's is matte as well. Yeah. Um, um, typically, palette, uh, same one, same is. palette. Um, so, and you could do, you could do sparkly, but we oh, were opting course. for matte. You can do anything you really want. You know, I think that in the 1960s, most things were more matte. Um, yes. But again, like, like I said, even these colors, we were trying to be inspired by um, pop art as well. So um, a technique, guys, if this is very highly pigmented, which it is, um, don't just go in. We're talking about the fallout that comes down on your face. Um, a trick is just tap, tap. Get that fallout off before you put it on your eye and then start going in. That's a great tip. And then we had another question about eyebrows. But before we get to eyebrows, I want you to just remind us all, remind all of our viewers. Um, we have a lot of viewers on Facebook. We've got YouTube. We've got Twitter. We've got Twitch. We're, we're, um, we love everybody who's joining us from all over. And they want to know, what, what did you do for your foundation? So like, what kind of face did you start with before you started? Foundation, actually, don't we, Jess? I think so, but today I mix mine with a uh, with Mac uh, with a liquid foundation. I think I have it. One sec. I don't have it with me right now. I, I use it cosmetics. Uh, it cosmetics CC cream, and I mixed it with my Studio Fix Mac foundation. Just because I haven't been getting much sun, I don't know about you guys in quarantine. I haven't mm -hmm. been going outside. I feel like every time I go outside, I'm like, ah, the sun. Uh, so I like to one, put SPF and two, mix it a tiny bit. So it looks like I have some more color uh, on me since I don't have a tan. Uh, I use the same It Cosmetics um, on my face. I first actually made sure I was super moisturized. Um, you can use a, use a primer. I did not this time. I used a... Um, this moisturizer that has like a little bit of sheen um, in it. And then after that, I put on top the, uh, my IT cosmetic CC cream. And then I used my Too Faced Born This Way uh, sculpting concealer, which you can actually use as a foundation as well. Um, but it's pretty, it's pretty thick. So it depends on what kind of, how, what kind of face you want. So, so while, sorry, go ahead, Megan. I was gonna say, while you all are filling in um, these vibrant colors. We did have a question about your wired palette. We, uh, some of our guests wanted to know how much it costs because I think maybe they're interested in adding that to their makeup toolkit. And then they also want to know um, what brushes you're using with the shadow. Oh well, yeah. Uh, so Sarah, you tell them about the brushes and uh, guys, I'll get the price uh, in a second. Cool. Um, I'm using a packing brush. Um, that's So it's a rounded packing brush. It's really dense. Um, it's I'll compare it to a blending brush uh, that's very fluffy, you know, so um, the difference is that if I use this type of brush on my eye, it would go all over the place, okay? It's <laughs> all the blue, it wouldn't come out as dark, and it would fall out everywhere. You want a tight, tight bristled brush. It's rounded. This is by, um, how do I say this? B. Dellum. Have a question about your Bidlam wired tools. Bidlam tools. Um, and it's Bidlam Tool 772 is the one I'm using and to pack on. And it's actually the I'm gonna be using the same brush uh, company. Great, perfect. Thanks, Jess. 
Um, <laughs> Uh, and Urban Decay is actually, we're not sponsored guys. Urban Decay is actually having a sale on this palette. It's $19.50. Usually Urban Decay palettes range uh, from 39 and up, but this one's on sale right now. I just went to their website. Um, it's on sale for 1950. Nice. Thank you so much for sharing that. We have a lot of great questions here. I also have a question um, about applying that, are you, would you, um, and I can kind of see just by seeing you side by side that you all both have different techniques, which is really great. Cause I think we all put on makeup a little differently, but what do you prefer? Do you prefer a dab of your eyeshadow? Do you kind of swish it across or pull it across? Do you stipple it on? What's all your depends. eyeshadow? It depends on the look right now. I'm stippling a little That's bit. What I've been doing. And, uh, and then I'm sweeping a very lightly on the edges to make that shape nice and round. Sweeping, I like that term. That's the, I, exactly. So I'm basically patting it on, so stippling as well. And I'm gonna be doing that again when I use my black liner. Um, it just helps apply, I feel like, and give a little more precision. But when you're packing on eyeshadow, you kind of need to push it down on there. Yeah, and you guys are going for a really concentrated color, right? We want lots of color. So pushing on as many layers of this is probably best, right? To get it to be as a deep and totally. bright as you can get. Yep, definitely. And you can blend it out if you want at the top. I might do that um, because I'm going to be doing a, a double line. Jessica will and not be doing a double line. She'll be doing more of a cat, extra cat eye extended. Um, and then I'm going to be doing the drawn out fake eyelashes like Twiggy did on mine. How long have you two been um, into makeup and doing makeup? We had a, a question on uh, one of our social media channels. They really wanted to know when you started uh, getting into it and, um, and how you learned. Like, did you learn by YouTube video? Did you watch your, um, you know, parent growing up? Did you read a book? Like, how did you get into it? So I've been obsessed with makeup. It's the obsession started in graduate school. Uh, actually, my my sister Giselle got me into it and she was really all about nude makeup and nice nude shadows. And then I just got obsessed with the YouTube beauty culture. Um, and I started to dive in and be less scared of color. I think when we all start, we usually all gravitate towards nude eyeshadow palettes and nude lipsticks because they feel very safe. But then mm -hmm. I found a beautiful red color of, of lipstick, liquid lipstick and, and that eyeliner I fell in love with and that was the end for me. Um, but I grew up watching my mom uh, do her makeup. She would always have these amazing Avon products at hand and I would, you know, I would sneak them. I would take them. I used to look like a ghost though before because I didn't know how to do my foundation. Um, but I have plenty of evidence of me looking like a ghost. So I definitely was obsessed with makeup probably when I was really, really little. I'm a third child. Um, I was asking for makeup for birthdays, Christmas, everything, um, probably from the age of, I don't even know, maybe like six. <laughs> and I would get it. And then I'd sit there and I used to put makeup on all the time and I'd play around with it. Um, I was wearing full face makeup like when I was in high school. I, I actually did not use foundation when I was a kid because I really didn't need it. And I knew that I didn't need it. So I wasn't that ridiculous. Um, but hundred percent. I was obsessed with, I've been obsessed with makeup since I can remember. I, my favorite Christmas present was called Little Miss Makeup. And I think that came out in like the late eighties. <laughs> I love that, Sarah. And, and, you know, you, you kind of bring up a good point that you've been doing this. You've been kind of, both of you have sort of had this um, love for it, this passion for it. And you've learned along the way, what styles and what trends you want to do. And you've kind of gone with the times, you know, maybe you didn't contour when you were in high school and now you're contouring, um, I want to mention because Jess is doing her eyeliner, her cat eye. I want to talk a little bit about this cat eye because when the three of us got together to really work on this event, we were saying the cat eye is timeless. I mean, it really started in ancient Egypt and I don't think it ever went out of fashion. No, and this idea of elongating your eye 
not only is it sultry, I mean, the Egyptians used it, uh, you are using coal to protect their vision, everyone. They're not using it for aesthetics. Later on, it became an aesthetic thing. Um, and we can see that in their sarcophagi, but centuries later, uh, we can see we can see them using these products. And we, inha we have another program coming up where we'll be doing um, Mediterranean inspired Egyptian, ancient Mediterranean inspired Egyptian makeup. But there's a few things happening at this time. Megan mentioned a few just so we can kind of contextualize what's going on. But color TV is very new, 1953. All right. So this desire to add makeup to your face color is very, very prevalent. A few other things. I mentioned that Twiggy is 17 in 1966. Um, mascara, waterproof mascara becomes a thing in the 60s. It's officially patented in the 60s. All of these uh, pop artists, English rock bands. So the British invasion is very big. We're inspired by the Rolling Stones, uh, Mick Jagger, Keith Richards, all wearing makeup on stage, heavy duty eyeliner. Um, and if you think of theater and theater productions, they wear heavy makeup. So where people are in the audience, they're able to see your features and similar idea. And not only is it pretty cool. And then all of a sudden we have a Ziggy Stardust appearing in um, Starman, intergalactic, right? Starman. And we have this idea of an androgynous exotic look with makeup and liquid mascara comes into play as well as eyeliners. False lashes are also invented in the sixties and become more of a commonplace um, as well as a torture device you all probably love. I can't live my house without this guys. Like if my lashes, my lashes literally look like this. They have to be curled. <laughs> All right. You know, I have a I have a little trivia question for everyone about this curler that you've just shown, which yours is like really high tech. I think I need to upgrade my like my drugstore Revlon um, curler one, there. This one is for Megan. This one's for my um, my eyelashes. So I'll explain it later. <laughs> what the question? Let's um, let's ask everybody really quickly. What's that one beauty product that you can't live without? I want to hear Sarah um, and Jess give us a little, a little tip about what theirs is, but I'm going to launch a poll here and then write in our comments. What is your, what's that one thing, you know, I mean, I, I'm sure our, our makeup routines as people have all changed since this pandemic, but what's that one thing you still gravitate towards? I know um, I've heard some of my colleagues and coworkers still putting on lipstick, even though they're wearing a mask, because that's just their their go to. They got to have fresh lips. I know what mine is. What's yours? Mine's mascara. I feel like you need to wear mascara on your eyes. It makes them pop. <laughs> uh, if it's not that concealer for your circles. OK, I love that. What about you, Jess? I'm torn, guys. This question is rough. You need one, <laughs> Jessica. Uh, for I'm me, <laughs> can, I, can I take everything? Um, I'm going to say an eyebrow pencil, I think, because I, I've worn glasses the majority of my life. And I'm cheating today and wearing my contact lenses, especially when I wear makeup. Uh, I think that your eyebrows frame your face. So an eyebrow pencil for me. Okay, eyebrow, it's all about the brows. And then for Sarah, it's either the mascara, which we did get a lot of comments about mascara. Um, on you, 100% mascara. I, because if I went out with just concealer on, I'd look crazy. I'd look like a dead person, so. And, <laughs> and then on our poll here, everyone's saying lipstick on our poll here that we did on Zoom, but we've got on Facebook, we've got the same comment, you know, mascara, um, you, you know, need some concealer. I am curious though, if you all could show us which liners you're using and maybe tell yeah. us a little bit about some techniques here with using a liquid um, felt liner. I think we're both using, are we using the same one, Jess, right now? Uh, I'm, I'm using my Urban Decay uh, Precision line. Um, it's a liquid liner. Um, if you haven't used one, that's fine. You do not need to use that for this look for any look really. If you wanna use a regular gel pencil or a regular pencil that you um, have to sharpen or you wanna use a brush with black powder or brown powder, same difference, totally fine. Um, if you're not, com it, it is a little difficult. The technique that I'm using is I'm actually uh, stippling it on so I don't mess it up when I was doing my rounded um, over my lid. 
Um, but, and then sometimes I actually go in with a black um, powder over the line just to define it even more. Um, but I, or you might be using that or your Stella, which I have a Stella one. It's just I, not as, I have as both. dark. Um, my Stella one, uh, everyone, is a tiny bit drier and it's also, oh, let me see if I can see it. Yeah, there it is. So it's also a felt tip versus the perversion one that Sarah and I, I'm going over or over my lines with this. Oh, there it is. Uh, this brush is, has actual individual brushes versus the Stilla is one, one component, one felt tip. I'm using the Stilla one first, mostly because you, when, when you saw me do the line, I committed, I committed to that line. I literally put it on, hold it, I press down lightly and drag to the middle of my eye. All right, if you are beginning, I yeah. suggest you start making little lines, little dotted lines. Um, and everyone does it differently, like Sarah is mentioning. What I like to do is you saw that I started at the end. I like to do one straight line, then I like to match the line. And then what I'm doing is I'm creating a triangle. I'm going back in holding it, pressing down and pulling to the middle of my eye. And then I filled in the rest. That's exactly uh, how I do it. Yeah. And then if you'll have gaps, go in again with your same liner or with a different liner. I'm going in with a different one. But you're also going to be see, seeing me go in with this. It's also um, an eyeliner pot by Suba Beauty. They're an indie makeup brand. They're really awesome. They have glow-in-the-dark eyeliners. And they give you a little... Um, <laughs> Uh, black light so you could check out your work. Oh, it's cool. So I'm going to be using doodle and I'm going to be using the white for my waterline because I want my eyes to look very big. And what black eyeliner does is it closes your eye because my eyes are already almond shaped. It's making them smaller and we want to open them back up. So you're going to be seeing that in a few minutes. Sarah, um, you're kind of moving on to your your iconic Twiggy look. I'd love I for you to just am. show us, show us so, how we can get this Twiggy look. Okay, so I have realized if you take a, an, anything, okay, this does, again, it should, this should really be some kind of fine tip something. So you definitely don't want to use, oh, sorry, a, like a, a pencil like this, okay? You definitely don't want to use like a gel pencil because it just won't work for the look. Um, you definitely want to use more of a fine tip uh, liquid. If you are uncomfortable with that, you can definitely wet a very tiny brush and go into some powder black and do the same thing. However, don't go in and just start dragging. What I've discovered is that the best thing you can actually do is just to like tap, 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 you know? So give us, a, give us a little demo here. Okay, I will. <laughs> Come up just a little higher. You see? There you, there you go. Hard to see, I know. Um, I'm literally just starting at the, my waterline and I'm dragging it down like raggedy in. Okay. Definitely, I'm I would tell I would terrify I'd be I'd scare my kids, okay, how I look right now. Get it. But it's all about fun. And that's what this time period is about, I feel like. It's very, very fun. Very, very fun look. And it's all about this eye. It's about the winged eye. It's about accentuating the eye, um, making those lashes look long, really shaping the eye. And um, we've had some comments throughout tonight, just so you ladies know, because I know you've been busy um, creating this masterpiece on both of your um, fresh faces. But um, some of our visitors are really loving the fact that, Jess, you're look goes over your natural lid, but then also comes back under, you know, how you're kind of, um, I almost think of it as like kind of a glow, a neon glow sort of surrounds your eye because you do come back in with the pink on the bottom. So we had some comments that they're really excited to see when you get to that part. And then Sarah, they, um, the comment section has been also really enthralled with this double, this double liner that you're doing on the top lid. So you're not only doing the liner lower down right onto yeah. the lash, but then what would you, oh, I, I guess, it. right at the at the crease, this liner that you're doing at the crease, well, I they did love it. a little it. bit above the crease. Again, I had mentioned, like if I actually did it in my crease, you wouldn't see it. It would just be hidden. Okay, that's um, a good so tip. So you have that's to go a little tip. bit above and that's, um, and that just helps so that you can actually 
it's and probably not- for wear it probably has better wear throughout the night right because we do blink as as you mentioned just early on like we're blinking we're moving our eyes and we want this look to kind of stay on our lid as long as it can yes all right everyone i am adding the white to my water line can we move to your second camera jess we're right there can you want me to um, is that better oh oh just switch over sorry second everyone oh there it is perfect thank you lady all right you want to be careful if you're in a contact lens where like i am um if we get the product in your eye the contact lens is going to change color uh so i'm trying to make sure that i don't wet my brush too much with water because these are activated by water and i'm just adding it to my water line very lightly to just bring some brightness back. And then I'll switch over to the main camera so you can sort of see the difference in my eye. So automatically that white mimics the white of your eye and it just makes it look a tiny bit bigger. I'm gonna be doing the same thing um, in my waterline, but I'm gonna be using a gel um, liner. So like a gel pencil liner, this is just from ColourPop and it, this is a little bit, this is definitely easier to use a little more friendly in the sense that, you know, if you use a liquid here, sometimes it goes in your eye and it's very uncomfortable. Um, yes, it is. Very uncomfortable. <laughs> yes, we had a, a question from Amanda about, um, you know, this is a very much an eye look and it's very much an eyeliner sort of a look. So what, what eyeliners would you recommend that you think are more beginner friendly? If you have a brand or if you have a style of eyeliner that you think a beginner would do better with? I would go actually with the brand that Sarah is using, ColourPop. Their production, um, they're another indie brand. Their production's out in California. They cut out the middleman. So the prices are incredible. ColourPop is really great. Um, and you wanna start with a pencil a regular eye pencil type liner um, that you can sharpen gel though. So you're not poking your eye. You're not poking your eye. You're not tugging at your lids or your waterline. You don't want to tug your face. So ColourPop is really great. I also really love uh, more of a higher end is Marc Jacobs. Well, that's a great Colourpop. one. ColourPop, you're looking anywhere between five, $10 liner, and then Marc Jacobs can run you up like $20. Yeah. So it depends on what you're trying to, the look you're trying to accomplish, but I would say pencils are the best for beginners. And then I would move up to uh, the type of liners that Sarah and I use today, the Stila or Urban Decay's Perversion liquid liners. Yeah. Now, interestingly enough, we talked a little bit about, you know, the era, the 1960s era. We talked about there's a lot going on. There's war. Um, product availability is changing. People might be rationing. We're really trying to, um, you know, limit their use of things for this wartime effort. But then we also talked a little bit about liquid mascara is first coming on the scene um, in the 60s. So this is sort of a newer uh, invention for them, right? Jess, you said it came out in, in 58 yeah. and, and it's revolutionizing the way women are doing their makeup. So we're moving away from mascara that used to look similar to this consistency, the black, but in a square. So you used to have a brick and a brush that looked like a toothbrush that you would have to wet and then apply. Oh, so cool. the invention of the wand, which used to be um, metallic, like it looked like a screw. It didn't look very comfortable. Plastic iterations of that came afterward, um, after the wars. So makeup becomes increasingly more accessible after the wars, especially after World War II, when there are ration, rations are in place, right? Metals, nylons, um, including some minerals and pigments. There are shortages everywhere. So women have to become really creative to figure out one, how they're gonna get their makeup, two, where they're gonna get the materials to make their makeup because they're producing these things at home. And then plastics become introduced later on. So the compacts become less fancy. I'm a huge collector of compacts from the 50s and the 60s. Um, so- Do you really? I do, I, I don't have them on yeah. me, I'm at home, but like I have two or three beautiful, beautifully made, beautiful, beautiful craftsmanship and engraving on them. And that's sort of lost with today's packaging with yeah. um, plastic. I do, I do think the compact 
um, was a huge invention. And I know just from my own sort of love of vintage items, but also um, watching movies and film that like a clutch. So back in that time, you would have a metal clutch that you would hold onto, that's your purse. But also when you open it up, there would be a built-in compact and a little poof to do your to do your foundation. There might be a little comb in there. There might be a tube of lipstick. Um, and I actually, yeah, I have one of those two as well, Jess, and none of the makeup still exists inside of it, but it's so cool to see so that this beautiful. was, it's so beautiful. And they had it right there in their handbag, this little metal clutch that they would carry around with them um, to go out to dinner or to go dancing. And obviously they're not carrying around a giant phone, right? So, <laughs> So there's no need for that. Literally, all you need is your rouge, uh, so your lipstick, and whatever you're putting on your eyes and your powder. So I'm going in with mascara, everyone. I love L'Oreal's Voluminous Lash eh, Waterproof Mascara. Yeah. So I'm doing one coat of that. And then if you watched us during our day of the day event, we had a wonderful makeup artist by the name of Beauty Chick. Make sure, um, Megan's gonna drop her information in the chat. Beauty Chick Studios, I'm gonna be using her lashes. She has a brand of lashes. I'll be using Aura. They're pretty massive. Um, and my favorite lash adhesive glue, oh, my mirror is almost falling, uh, Duo. Yeah, I'm going to be, well, right now I've been putting my mascara. I'm just trying to honestly clump it on uh, because that actually was the look of the 60s was, so if you got those spider, you know, when you, when you hear like, oh, don't get those like spider eyelashes, uh, it kind of was a look back then. So um, I will say this, once you put the, the mascara on the bottom, those lashes that I created are, they look a little less crazy. Maybe that's just me seeing that, but. I think it helps blend yeah. it in a little bit. Beautiful. Uh, I'm gonna blow on my lash to just quicken the process. You want your glue to be tacky, otherwise one of the corners are gonna flip up. Obviously everyone knows you're wearing a fake lash, but yeah. you don't want them to see the glue. <laughs> I'm gonna be using Kiss uh, lashes and Duo, um, Duo glue. So I'm just applying, let me see if you can see, I'm just gonna apply lightly you could do it this way or you can honestly i i used to just put it on like a plate <laughs> the glue and i'd like slightly swipe my lashes through um you don't want too much um you can see jess's is white mine is black in color um you want it to get tacky like jess said so let it sit blow on it whatever you need to do we have a fun poll here for everyone uh, watching and um, you can put this in the comments on social media or if you're following us here on Zoom, you can click what you think. But what years um, do you think the first artificial eyelashes began to appear? What years do you think the first artificial eyelashes began to appear? And I have to be honest with you too, Sarah, Jess, I don't, I, I don't do a lot of artificial eyelashes. I've um, I'm upset. maybe maybe tried it one time in my in my whole life, maybe for a wedding or a prom, but um, I do not own them actively. So they are a little daunting to me. Any tips for a scared first time user? Absolutely. Uh, get ones that look more natural. Let me switch over the camera here. Get ones that are, look a tiny bit more natural. And when you have a brand new lash, you see how this is curved? I like to take my lash and curl it around a pencil so it becomes has that curve, a nicer curve. And then before you slap them on, a lot of people uh, don't cut them. I trim my lashes to the size of my eye. We're all so different. Our eyes are very different. So make sure you trim your lashes. I like to trim them from the outer, the outer part, the longer. Some people do on the inside, whatever you're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. um, and then what Sarah said, make sure the glue is nice and tacky. You can use tweezers or you can use your hands. Oh, I'm getting all the poll results. Great job, everyone. Yes, between 1902 and 1911, the first known pine of artificial lashes was by a woman named Anna Taylor from Canada. And the patent officially became official in 1911, but they don't really pick up a lot of popularity until the 60s. With these looks that Sarah and I are wearing, sometimes they would 
pile on two to three big lashes on the top lid. And then Twiggy made it super popular to do bottom lashes. I'm not really great doing bottom lashes, but what I am great with is mascara. And I'm gonna try and clump it up so we can try to emulate her look today. So we're coming to the... Sorry. We're coming to about the last 10 minutes of our program, just giving you all a time check. What were you going to say, Sarah? I was going to say, have you ever, like, I've never put fake lashes on my bottom lashes. Have you done that, Jess? And I've done out? it for Halloween. <laughs> I was like, and gone out? <laughs> yeah, for Halloween. Hmm. No, I've never done it. You know, I could see someone doing that, doing some of the individual ones um, at, in place of the Twiggy, you know, drawn on lashes. You could do some individual all right, everyone, since we have our 10 minute check, I am wiping away all of that powder. If you notice, I don't have fallout from the hot pink. And if you look extra, extra powdery, I'm gonna teach you a trick. You're gonna be putting setting spray. I like the Urban Decay brand. I think you guys have gathered that from all the stuff you've seen me use. It's pretty good. I mean, I feel like it's very pigmented. They're, they're playful with their colors, but they also have very nice nudes and neutrals. You know, obviously like the Naked palette's gotten huge and popular, so. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna finish. Right, my lighting is, is rough and I need the lighting for uh, to apply my lashes. So that's why I've been a little hidden because I have to go as close as possible right now. I apologize. It's just, if, you I, all if I don't, they're gonna be over here. <laughs> <laughs> that could be a new look while you yeah, all are, while you are um, finishing up your eyes you're applying your lashes you're doing your mascara on the top and bottom and doing really layering on as you mentioned we have one um guest who would like to know just your personal opinion how would you transition this from day to nighttime so let's say you wanted to wear a look like this to the office the proverbial <laughs> office the work from home office um, and then you wanted to dress it up like you are doing now for sort of more of a nighttime glam look. Well, how would you alter it? Um, so for me with the hot pink look, I would still rock the hot pink in the office. I would probably not wear the giant lashes. Uh, if you notice when I turn to the side, they stick, they stick out a lot and I can actually see the shadow. <laughs> <laughs> Mine are definitely more natural lashes. Yeah. By <laughs> I would not do the lashes. I would keep the shadow. Uh, if you want to mute it a tiny bit, perhaps use a more pastel pink and then use the hot pink to contour your eye to give it some dimension. If you notice today, I did not do that. Um, today was just one flat color. So there was no, honestly, there was no contouring. Uh, and then uh, what I'm doing now is I'm going to be adding two lip glosses. This one's a little too light for me, uh, but I'm going to be building it with this one. Both are from Fenty. The lighter one is Taffy Teas and the darker one is Ruby Milk. Um, I would still, I Megan can vouch for this and so can Sarah. I love wearing a liquid liner to work. So they've seen me all glammed out at work as well. Yeah. You just have to own it, I think. Honestly. I do too. I think you just have to, once people know you like that, I don't think it's a big deal. You know, I mean, it's not a big deal. I mean, it's yourself. Who cares? But um, I was going to say, I tried oh, pink before and I'm pretty much was like, I can't go out like this. So what I've done is there's a lot of like beautiful peaches now that are really popular um, as they look like neutrals, but they add that extra pop of color. So you can include some of those more peachy tones. And then if you want to go like in the V and darken it with maybe a little bit of a red, um, I think you can achieve a more like everyday look too. I think you two both look beautiful every day at the office. So I'm just going to... Um, <laughs> Go ahead and, and make that blanket statement. But um, Sarah, if you could switch over to your other camera and just show us a nice close up of your finished eyes. Sure. And then um, same for you, Jess. We I want to just give you two more comments we have here. Um, we want to know, oh, I, yes, Jess is giving us a nice closed look so you can see the full winged yeah. eye there. Yeah, come in really close. Give us a closed lid. <laughs> And you can, um, if you each just say something when you close your eyes, that way it'll show up on Facebook because <laughs> it only shows one face at a time. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. 
I don't know what to say. <laughs> it's too weird to say that. I would probably never go in, in public wearing a bright blue, but I had a lot of fun creating the look. You look so nice. I'm going to try the blue next, honestly. Yeah? Yeah, I, I love I it. pink on me. I just look super crazy. I think it's my skin tone with... Guys, I've tried this look like four times now. We, we practice these looks a lot. So I've gotten, at first I was weirded out by the pink, but now I'm, I love the pink. Well, I have to tell you the comments section, they're loving the colors that each of you chose. We're getting a lot of comments about your skin tone. They think you did an excellent job of choosing colors from your palettes that really complemented your complexion. Um, they, they, they think you did a great job. They, they love the, the fake lashes, but they also love the natural lash look. They think the pink is fantastic. Yeah. I see a comment that says, can men wear these colors? Yes, John, men can wear these colors too. Absolutely. Well, I we're, we have four minutes left. We're ending our session. Um, I wanna say that I think you two have created an incredible look for each of you. I love that you've tailored it each specifically to what you um, want to wear. You didn't each do the same makeup look. You chose something that goes with your complexion, with your skin tone, and also that just interests you. But I love too your nod to pop art and really popping your eyes. Um, I also want to just bring up, we will be doing another uh, session. Uh, I know we mentioned it earlier. Uh, we will be focusing on ancient Mediterranean. So we'll be focusing on ancient Egyptian uh, makeup. So definitely join us next time. And to add on to the comment, um, ancient Egyptians, both men and women alike, wore very similar makeup, just for a little sneak peek of some of the conversations that we're going to be having. Um, and I think that that's what, um, you know, makeup's for everyone. Like I said earlier, it's all about fun. We don't have the exact date. Uh, keep an eye on our website. So Megan, could you drop our Noma from home? side we update that every week on monday and that has the the menu of programs for the week all right so i do hope you enjoyed tonight's program so like it on social media share it with everyone these videos will be up so if you want to try and recreate these looks you can try it yourself we do hope that you enjoyed tonight don't miss out on the next one. Make sure you sign up for our emails, our newsletters, check out the website. And I believe we have up next will be Ask an Astronomer, Searching for Aliens, Finding Ourselves. And you can sign up for that as well in the chat. And let's end with you two just giving us one last, one last look at those eyes. I've got to see them. They're just gorgeous. Yes, give us one. Cl come closer, Sarah. We want to get really in there. My lighting, I feel like it's a little off. Let me all right. No, it. you look great. Close enough. It's all about that know. 60s eye, isn't it? It is all about the 60s eye and the pop art eye. Oh, are we still closing our eyes? <laughs> Thank you both so much Thank for you. this. We're really looking forward to the next one. Like um, Jess and Sarah said, please sign up on um, line for our email so that you can know when we're doing our next one. Follow us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram. Good night, everyone. We hope that this has inspired you to go pick up some of your palettes and your liners and create some art on this palette that is your face. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night. Bye. Bye.